You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Good day, I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center. Uh, special treat today, uh, I have my grandson here, and uh, he's going to tell us about life in the big city. Uh, let's see, a couple things. Uh, uh, this cane, uh, I picked this up at Suburban Pharmacy. I'm having a hip problem right now, so um, I've been using this, and frankly, you have to learn how to use a cane, and uh, I'm not so swift at that. You unscrew this, and then there's a button here. When you unscrew this, you can move this. You can push that button in, and it moves up and down and adjusts to your height. I sort of like the color and feel of that. This is because it's supposed to rain like crazy today, and uh, they're talking about flash floods. Next is uh, I have a bottle, uh, a bottle. I have a box here of 85% chocolate from uh, Trader Joe's. And I recommend that if you eat chocolate, and there are apparently a few studies now that are actually pretty reasonable that show that eating 72% or higher chocolate is actually good for you. Uh, there have been other studies that have said that. You may say that's very old news. Well, the studies are getting better and they're more conclusive. Uh, a couple of points I'd like to make uh, is that uh, any supplement, any food like this, I say it's a bad idea to do it every day. I usually recommend four to five days a week and bragging a little bit. In my book, I talk about WWO, Wednesday and the weekend off. So that would be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, which would be four days a week. Well, actually, I think that the week should have been arranged a little bit differently. There should be eight days in a week. But uh, regardless, there's only seven. So what I say is if you can remember Four days one week, five days the next week, and if you can't remember, no big deal. So again, with all supplements, with vitamins, minerals, herbs, supplements, special foods like this uh, that aren't sort of a part of the regular diet, uh, four to five days a week. Now, this is a magazine that I brought along, and this happened to be a particular ad, and the ad says, Pure Silk. What is it people are supposed to wear? Are they supposed to wear silk, wool, linen, uh, Under Armour, like my grandson? And actually, I'm wearing an Under Armour t-shirt. Uh, and the answer is, I think the safest and healthiest is probably to be as natural as possible. And you should be thinking to yourself, well, you just said you're wearing an Under Armour t-shirt, and that's not as healthy as possible. Uh, a little bit of flexibility, always. Uh, the world is lacking an immense amount of flexibility these days. Everybody is very rigid in their thinking, right, left, center. Uh, flexibility is what we need. Next is uh, a sweater. This is a cashmere sweater, of which I bought about three or four. And uh, I bought this at Joseph A. Banks a number of years ago. It was on sale. I wear this all the time. I'm always wearing my black cashmere sweater. It's so comfortable. I feel so good in it. And when you put your arms down on the table, it keeps you nice uh, uh, from contacting that cold table. So I really like that a lot. 
Next is my Note 5. I'm waiting for the Note 8. As you know, the Note 7 blew up, and uh, so uh, that one's not even available right now. Uh, Samsung has come out with the S8 Plus, and uh, I, I may be forced to go with that because I wonder if it's the end of the Note uh, program because the S8 is considerably bigger than the Samsung S8 regular. Uh, they're using the same ideas back and forth between iPhones. Well, enough of that, and now on to a discussion with my grandson, Jacob Silverstein. Uh, Jacob, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. A little bit louder, please. Thank you for having me here. Right. Uh, Jacob is a very interesting character. Uh, everybody wants to say their grandson is very smart. He's very smart. Uh, great learning capabilities, real math ability. He's sort of a star in his school academically, even though not every subject is his favorite. Uh, how can every subject be anybody's favorite? Um, so uh, tell me the story of going to this school. Well, what I mean is uh, you get up at what time and you go to school at what time and how do you get there and how long is school and then how do you get home? And let's talk about the activities Monday through Friday school year, Jacob Silverstein. Okay, so in the morning I wake up at 7 and I take the bus to school. Which, then, hang on one second. Which camera is he looking Okay, are you looking at Okay, fine, go ahead. Um, and then I wake up at seven. I wake up at seven. Take the bus to school. How many people are on your bus? Usually ten to fifteen. Okay. And then. Um, is that I, a city bus or is that a private bus? Private bus. Okay, go ahead. And um, I have school from eight twenty-five to three fifteen, in which I have subjects English, history, Spanish, and then an arts rotation. Lunch. What? What was the last one? An arts rotation. It's so like a mix between dance, theater, art, uh, steel drums, and chorus and life skills. And What's then life skills? You learn about like how you make friends and um, how to meet with your teachers and things I like that. I should have gone to that school. Uh, the life skills, that would have helped me out a little bit. Go ahead. And then I have PE every day and I have science and math. Then at 3.15, I come back home on the bus. All right, so how many different classes do you have? Uh, I have eight different periods, look at, look including at the um, eight different periods plus an advisory period. Um, What's the advisor tell you? So, like, that's just like, uh, like someone you go to if you have problems or someone you... Um, Someone who could what are some of the you. problems that kids go to their advisor with? I'm like, not saying you. I'm saying some of the kids. Um, maybe. Um, having trouble with a class? Right, uh, like having trouble with a class. How do I study for this? I'm overloaded or things like that. Jacob has a skill that I never mastered. Uh, he is, number one, an incessant reader. Uh, the, the audience will probably easily believe what I'm about to say next is, and that is, I almost never read a book. Uh, reading a book is next to impossible for me. That's not true. As, as Jacob's father would say, that's because I'm immensely lazy. But uh, it is true that Jacob is always reading something, and in a certain sense I am too, but what I'm reading is more scientific articles and short articles, long articles, and I drift out. Do I have ADD? Would I have been helped by medicine or cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT? Uh, that's possible and that's even probable. Uh, but uh, as you can see, at least I was able to get through med school and uh, become a doctor and uh, so on and so on. So uh, what I'm trying to make uh, the point is people have various concentration skills and Jacob is a superstar. I've, I've been around him and watched him and what I've already said sort of is the truth. He's always reading something and um, uh, he has that ability. I think study habits are one of the great dividing lines about who's going to be successful in the school level that Jacob is in. Those people who know how to study or have the ability or are taught how or it's natural, in Jacob's case it was natural, are going to do much better 
than those whose attention drift off. Now, am I recommending medication or, or not? Uh, Jacob, are there a fair number of kids that uh, take medication uh, at your school? Do you know or um, you don't know? No, not about like school or stress or um, like uh, being calm and being able to focus. Right. Well, I, I think it's actually much higher in most public schools, but um, uh, that's basically good news. We need to be as natural as possible, and that sort of brings us back to the silk, wool, linen discussion, and then the Under Armour. Does the Under Armour clothing affect your ability to study? That I don't know. Uh, but uh, All right, so uh, let's go on with your school. You have lunch there? Uh, yeah, the cafeteria has um, very good food, and uh, everyone eats there every day. And we have um, ID cards, which you are able to put money on, and then um, you buy the food, and they charge it to your card. It's like a credit card, but only for school. Give me three or four items uh, besides salad and milk uh, that they have available. Uh, what do they have? For example, like um, they have different meats like burgers, hot dogs, chicken breast. Then they have like sides like uh, onion rings or fries or dumplings. Then they have sushi. Um, they have pasta. And they have brown rice pasta or is it wheat pasta? It's wheat pasta. Uh-huh. Do they have brown rice there or quinoa? I'm not no. kidding. I'm just asking a question. No. They don't have that. No. Okay. Maybe I ought to come down and talk to the dietary department or stay away. <laughs> All right, so go ahead. So uh, how long do you get for lunch? Uh, we get 45 minutes, but you don't have to spend um, it all eating lunch. You can eat, and then you can go out and play on, like, the field or in the gym on the basketball courts, or you could just hang out with your friends. And then what happens? So that's lunchtime. And uh, are people sort of sedated after lunch, uh, sleepy in class, or not really? Um, not really. We have, like, um, I think they purposely put um, art after, like, uh, lunch. So that way people, like, can't really be sleepy because, like, in... Um, be doing it's, something. It's, right. Like, it's not like a history class where you sit and listen to the teacher uh, talk. It's... Um, the teacher is explaining something and then you are doing what they were doing. Um, you mentioned history. What are you studying in history right now? Uh, we were studying like the origins of our country. For example, like um, how the Dutch and the English and the French all came over here and um, slaves and Africa and then uh, New York. Was there any discussion about the, the possibility that the Vikings may have been here before uh, the Dutch and the French and the English? Uh, no, but they said how like the Native Americans were here before. Yes, the Native Americans were here before. That is an interesting and sad story of how uh, the Native Americans were treated. Um, okay. Um, oh, you know, your grandparents or great-grandparents I uh, came over around 1915, and uh, at least uh, on your father's side. So uh, we weren't here for when the Indians uh, were being dealt with. Yeah. Right now in history class, we're up to like the Erie Canal, and so we're up to like 1850 um, in New York City with like the grid plan, the Erie Canal, and how they made New York like the center of trade. Now, it should be said that uh, Jacob lives in New York City. Uh, so, all you know, as you listen to him talk, he's sort of New York's focused, and uh, which surprises me a little bit uh, that it would be so focused on New York City. But uh, because I remember I grew up in Ohio, and we studied the Erie Canal, and uh, uh, that's because we have Lake Erie in Ohio. And, of course, uh, the Erie Canal. Where's the Erie Canal run from and to? It runs from uh, New York City. It runs to the Hudson River, which connects to New York City. It runs from there to the Mississippi River. Really? I didn't know that. All right, so uh, what's your last course of the day? Uh, I have math last period. Math last period. Now, I take it uh, there are different... Is there just one 
group of people who are in your grade, or are there various groups of people and they're all kind of rotating through math? Um, there's one group of people, but then there are like different classes, like there's regular math and then there's B math and yeah. And uh, so what happens after math? Uh, then um, I either have a club or I take the bus home. What kind of clubs are your options? Uh, you could join like a science club or a math club or like robotics. Robotics? Tell me about robotics. So like you just build robots from scratch, like they give you the equipment and then you have to build them without any instruction, basically. <laughs> without any instruction? Yeah. Uh, well, there's got to be some instruction. I mean, is there a teacher there to kind of... Uh, there's like a teacher, but... Um, but uh, is it like Tinker Toys and you can figure it out? They're like Legos, I think. Like Legos. Are they metal or plastic? Plastic. The, the robots are plastic? Yeah. Okay. I sort of don't get but that. They have, but they have something that programs them. Okay. And uh, so then you uh, finish up at 315, you said? 315. And 315, and then you're on the bus? Yep, uh. and then I take the bus home from school, and then I come home, and I either go home and do homework, or I go to one of my after-school activities. How old were you when you started having homework? What grade were you in? Um, I was, I've had homework since kindergarten, but of course it was like very basic homework. We were given like one worksheet for the whole week and we just had to finish it at home and our parents were allowed to help us. But that was like the start of homework. Kindergarten, my goodness. I was taking a nap in kindergarten, and there wasn't any homework back in the old days. We used to have these rugs that we laid down on. Did you have that? We had rugs that we just sat on, yes. Sat on. Okay. But we also had tables. All right, now I understand you're headed to camp. Uh, where is your camp? Uh, it's in the Adirondack Mountains. And uh, you have a lake there, I presume? Uh, yeah. Is it a clear water lake? Now, clear water means clear water. Is it a clear water lake? Um, it's not like completely clear, but like it's not polluted. Uh-huh. Uh, I grew up in Ohio and there, there was this lake 13 miles from my hometown. And uh, some of the people I knew had f uh, homes there. Uh, so I'd go up, uh, actually my girlfriend had, uh, uh, her family had a home up there. But uh, there are no natural lakes in Ohio. Uh, they're all man-made. They were probably made during the 30s, during the recession, uh, sort of created work to give people jobs. And, uh, but the one thing I always remember about that, the water was green. It was always green. And I always lusted, desired, wanted clear water. And uh, actually I was in Florida this past May, uh, and went into the water one day, and the water was so clear, it was like crystal clear. Then after that, there was a storm out to sea, and uh, the water was rough, and it wasn't so clear. But I was astounded that Miami Beach had clear water, because when I first went to Florida in the late 19, early 1950s, uh, the water was uh, sort of green then, and that has to do with pollution and mud and so on and so on. All right, so uh, what, are, what about your camp? What do you got to say about your camp? Uh, it's lots of fun, and we play like sports all day, and we do uh, certain activities and games, and then, uh, yeah. Is there a competition? Uh, there is. At the end of the year, there's something called green and gray, which is uh, like a color war, and you're uh, pulled onto sides. And then it's four days long, and uh, the two teams just try to beat each other. What do you think about competition? Is this the way of life? Are we supposed to, uh, to work against other groups? Uh, and, uh, what, I mean, People talk about how it builds character, it builds teamwork, but uh, it's sort of my team against that team. 
And uh, I mean, it must be okay, but I sort of wonder, what do you think? Um, competition is the way life is going to be until old age. For example, you're always competing for jobs, money, uh, probably like a girlfriend or a wife. And so you have to learn to compete against other people or teams. Now, I think that was a pretty smart answer. Uh, Jacob is 11 years old. He's also exceedingly tall for 11 years old. You said you were five, six. Five, six. I think he's five, six and a half. But uh, regardless, at age 11, that makes him one of the taller kids in his class. Are you the tallest kid in your class? Uh, how many more are taller than you are? Probably three or four. Really? Three. And how tall is the tallest kid? Uh, probably six feet tall. Already? Maybe. Yeah. Six feet tall yeah. in the which grade? Sixth? Sixth, yeah. Sixth grade. Six feet tall in the sixth grade. Can you imagine? Uh, Jacob, you're interested in baseball. Tell me about uh, you and baseball. Yeah, so um, I love playing baseball. I practice every Tuesday and I play a game, uh, a doubleheader every Saturday, and then I just practice like whenever I can. Yeah. You actually have baseball classes that you go to, is that right? Your father takes you to practice? Yeah, yeah. My nanny takes me to practice because it's like on Tuesday and dad's at work and mom's at work. Mm hmm. Uh, are you what's called a latchkey kid? I don't know exactly. Is he a is, is he is that the definition of a latchkey kid? I, that's the first time I'm hearing of it. Uh, you guys don't know that phrase. Okay, fine. Uh, anyhow, so uh, you go to baseball practice. How long do you stay at baseball practice? Uh, it's one and a half hours. One and a half hours, and that's every week. Every week on Tuesday. Every week on Tuesday. How are your fielding skills? Uh, well, we practice a lot in fielding. We also have to practice in hitting, pitching, running, of course. But um, we practice fielding a lot, so they've definitely improved a lot. How's your hitting? Good. How's my hitting? I've never seen you. Yes, you have. Well. You've seen me hit. I'm terrible. Something happened. Somewhere along the line, I lost the ability to focus on the ball. So when Jacob comes over, and I have two legs, right now I have one leg, uh, uh, we play uh, pitch and catch out and back, and we have a batter, a catcher, and a pitcher. And we uh, use regular ball bats and uh, either tennis balls or Nerf balls. And for some reason, I'm terrible. I, You know, they, uh, there was a movie, Jack Reacher, uh, with Tom Cruise. And I heard a, a wonderful phrase in that movie, uh, and it was the phrase, perishable skill. And that is so true of so many things. Jacob's a math whiz. I, uh, I used to be a math whiz, but I'm terrible at math now. And it's, I suppose it's almost like everything. Everything is a perishable skill. The proverbial use it or lose it. And I think I lost it. Uh, I lost math. I lost baseball. I used to be a coach for baseball. Uh, I used to coach kids uh, a little bit older than you. Uh, I pitched to them almost every night. I had a sore arm almost every night um, because we saved our pitchers. We had a kid on our team who you remind me of. He was tall, trim like you, and uh, he ended up uh, going to law school at Harvard from little old Bell Fountain, Ohio, which is where I'm from. Uh, how much time do we have? Five minutes. Uh, so uh, uh, any points of interest uh, you'd like to discuss? Um, no, I'm just interested in baseball, math, tennis, uh, tennis, I guess. Tennis, uh, second. But uh, as tall as you are, basketball holds no interest for you, or it does? Um, I'm going to try out for my school team next year, but that's only because there's, like, no other good sport to play in the winter. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I remember talking to um, somebody who was a scout once, and he said if you wanted to know who the best baseball players were, yeah, it was the best – no, the best basket. I forget which way it went. But anyhow, it was baseball and basketball were almost interchangeable. And so that you scouted 
the other one that was in season when you were looking for the other one. I think it was basketball for baseball. So you scouted basketball when you were looking for baseball players. Uh, good. Um, so um, how much have you grown in the past year? Do you know? Uh, two and a half, three inches, I think. Two and a half, three inches. How's your running? Are you a good runner? Um, yeah. Yeah? Good runner? Long legs help. Long, <laughs> long legs help. He has long legs. All right. Um, well, uh, as you might imagine, I have some opinions about uh, the uh, brown rice, vegetables, beans, fruit, nuts, and seeds at Jacob's school. But, uh, you know, win some, lose some. And uh, right now, that's not the, uh, which uh, camera? This one. Uh, that's not exactly where things are at his school, but uh, that's my issue and not his issue. And then uh, today, we're going to uh, go over and check out Cabela's uh, just because it's sort of entertainment. Uh, he's been coming to West Hartford for years and years uh, to visit. And so um, uh, he sort of knows what's going on around here. His parents uh, come up here and they shop BJ's uh, to load up because the BJ's is not as convenient in New York City as it is here in West Hartford. So uh, they do that. So Jacob knows about that. He knows about the mall and so on. And of course, you know, you're going to compare our better malls with Manhattan, with Fifth Avenue and Madison Avenue. Uh, I like that phrase. I don't think so. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, an outdoor store should prove to be fairly interesting. Uh, <clears throat> anything else you want to talk about, Jacob? Um, no. Tell me about your sister. Oh, my sister Mara. So I used to go to a public school, PS11, and now she's going there. She's still in school while I'm on break. And we leave to go to camp on Saturday. She's going to, oh, you're both going We're to camp? We're both going to you're camp. You're both going to camp. And when does her school end? Uh, her school ends t uh, the Tuesday after we leave for camp. So she's missing two days. <laughs> so of she's school. missing two days. Uh, in the old days, they used to not be permitted. Uh, is she going to be in trouble when she leaves? Or? No, basically everyone does it. Everybody does it. Well, half the class, basically. Right. Did you have graduation last year? Did, uh, yeah. And what was that like? You had somebody who we spoke. We sang like seven songs, and then we like, and then we had a bunch of people speak, and then. And the got, students speak. Yeah. Why yeah. did they speak, or what did they speak about? Like um, how great PS11 was, and what a great time they had there. Uh huh. And was that a good school for you? Um, I thought it was like um, not very challenging, and um, so I didn't really like it that much. See, you got to remember, Jacob is a rara awas. How many here know that rara awas? Uh, I'm. You might know it if I mispronounce it. It would be rara avis, uh, avis being bird, rare bird. Jacob is academically gifted. And uh, that's part of the reason he was in PS11 to begin with, because he had to take entrance exams. And it's also part of the reason he's in his new school. But um, uh, so that's it pretty much for today. Uh, I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center. Hope you enjoyed this touch of life uh, discussion today.